Hey guys, King Charles here, WO Judge, Judge, and your Alice, and today I bring to you the most powerful Knocked Owl team for Open Great League. I know it's been a few days since I've released a video. I apologize as I took a kind of took a break. Go Battle League's been kind of pissing me off. Not emotionally, but it's definitely kind of I've been more focused on my career as a therapist, so I actually just got my registration number two for my mentor for being a marriage family therapist too. So that's exciting. And I literally have almost a full caseload and I'm pretty happy with my career right now. So, but with that being said, I also needed to take a little bit of a break. So I appreciate y'all that come back and watch my content, even though I take a break and I really do appreciate every single one of y'all. Good. Before we get started with the most powerful knocked out team for Open Great League, according to peepoke.com, this is going to be, it's literally the second most powerful team, and it features Stunfist, Knocked Owl, and Trevenant. I, Trevenant's going to be your safe switch for this team. A lot of times, though, you will see me sack Steve Fisk and Lee, unless it's a really badly, like, Metacham, you're likely going to send Aiden Trevenant to safe switch, or you're going to send in Knocked Owl, either one, but you're going to see me just sack Trev, you're going to see me do a lot of sack the lead strats with G Fisk if I outright lose the lead. Or if I lose the lead, or if there's if it's something like a Lickitung or whatever, try to earthquake through shields instead of just outright just like giving up switch with G Fisk. Because G Fisk since season two is still one of the most powerful mods in this meta. But before we get started, my therapist mental health tip of the day, you could skip this by going two minutes out of the video, or you could go to chapters. But like I said, I took breaks. So this is from the well-being thesis. It's a great article on breaks. And research has found that taking breaks can be very beneficial for your work. Micro breaks, lunchtime breaks, and longer breaks have shown to have a positive relationship with well-being and productivity. So it can boost your performance. At the same time, with YouTube videos, I almost have a thousand videos published. So with that being said, I have done a lot of work on my channel. So it's nice to take a little break here and then. And as you see, this is a nice little break for me. And I am motivated to come back and do more work, especially with the fact that all three leagues are going to end and we're going to have another special cup coming. Without further ado, this is the best knocked out team for Open Great League, and let's get started. Alright, here are the battles. So this knocked owl team is really weird because knocked owl is kinda your safe switch, but I find that I'm sacking G Fisk a lot. We got G Fisk versus Trevenant, and this is a terrible lead. In the two shield matchup, your opponent may break may use their shields, but at the same time, they can also choose to just shadow ball through shields, absolutely ball out, take out more than like 50% of your HP, and the poor your poor pancake is in a lot of trouble. And this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Shadow Ball goes through. If you get a Trev lead, usually what's gonna happen is that you try to sack it and then you send Knocked Owl in to get more energy. Or you can give up switch and try to send it on, but you don't want it to get any extra energy. Or you don't want to trap Knocked Owl into something like a basket eye. We're going to send in Knocked Owl. And as you see, they still have two shields. We have like two freaking wing attacks worth of energy and we get a G Fisk. So this is absolutely terrible. So how do we come out with a win condition here? Well, I'm going to ball out too because Knocked Owl got a sweet Shadow Ball. Mine is a rank one. Unfortunately, it doesn't do much. 25% HP is what Shadow Ball does, about 25%, I guess. But as you see, Rock's like chunks. So I'm going to send in my Swamp Bird, and I'm able to get a little bit, like, one, too much shots worth of energy. I'm going to build it to Earthquake, and I'm going to fire Hydro Cannon. Swamp Bird, two shields, trying to the back. Might require you to bait a lot, or to call your, your opponent call your shield. So as you see here, my opponent is able to call the... Well, it, it's fine if the Hydro Cannon goes through or not. Whether you bait or not, we're just trying to get as much energy as humanly possible. I'm gonna fire the second Hydro Cannon right here, and then what I'm trying to do here is you just... Expert Energy Management. That's really the name of the game. And the fact that because Swamp Bird has such a high attack stat, it can win CMP against a lot of things like this Lickitung here. So, we're just gonna get as much energy as humanly possible, and then I'm going to fire Hydro Cannon. It's gonna take a minute for Lickitung to get to another one anyways, but I'm just gonna get, keep revving up these Hydro Cannons, and you just wanna chip damage. Swapper two shield strat is still really dangerous in this meta. It's in in open great league. It's still really good, except for the fact that there's a ton of random stuff out there that's trying to take your soul right now. So, 
as you see, like, things like Toxapex is what I'm trying to mean. That's why we're running Earthquake on Swampert, because Earthquake gives you that win condition against Toxapex. And as you see, we're just absolutely annihilating our opponent, and they top left because, as you see, Swampert, despite the fact that we lose lead and we lose switch, Swampert is a freaking beast with shields. That's why. GG's. <laughs> For the next battle, we got a freaking... This is why I don't care about Legend right now. I really don't. Not only, I should be Legend right now, or at least in a high 2900s, but Lag has factually taken my soul more than times I'd like to, like, Lag getting screwed over by... Yeah, it's what it is. There's still plenty of time left this season, but you know, I just don't care about it anymore. I really don't. Especially when people that aren't Legend have more subs than I do, which I found out, like, some of my friends are like, dude, why do you still, like, dude, why are you stressed about Legend so much? Because, like, you know, there are some people out there that, like, never made Legend, and they have more than you. I'm like, you know, that's a really good point. <laughs> so, as you see here, we're gonna Earthquake our way through Shields, or they've made it way less than I have, and I'm just like, why? I made it during the Death lineup, where it was, like, four times other than that, but yeah, it's what it is. So as you see, we got Lickitung onto G-Fisk, and if you can Earthquake, double Earthquake through shields, you can actually win a two-shield matchup, as you see here. So in a two-shield against Lickitung, boom. But they did that for a reason, because there's a Metacham, and this Metacham isn't switching out because I already know you got Ice Punch. The only reason a Metacham XL would stay against the Noctowl is because it has Ice Punch. And they're going to have something really good for this Noctowl in the back, or something of that sort. I'm going to fire a Sky Attack, I'm hoping I break a shield. But this is already a little bit, this is a really little dicey. Because with Ice Punch, Metachamp doesn't have a bad matchup against Noctowl. And of course, Metachamp XL is incredibly bulky. So, Ice Punch goes through. I have to shield the second one. I'm hoping to grab the second shield with the Sky Attack. If I don't, it's fine. The idea here is just to save Swapper with a shield. And I have a sack with G Fisk. So, there are some win conditions here. However, this freaking, oh my gosh, it's. This Metacham, we're not able to get this Sky Attack, and this Metacham is just farming. I'm going to sack G Fisk here, and we're just gonna just take as much energy off of this Metacham as possible, and we just gotta hope that Swampert can come out with some kind of Wing Con. As you see, I go for the Hydro Can. They're gonna get to Ice Punch first. However, I won't shield this one. This is really ballsy because you don't actually know what their back row is, but I'd rather have Swampert with a shield. And as you see here, we get a Needle Queen. If that's a Needle Queen, if it's a Shadow Needle Queen, I could farm this down and get to a second Hydro Cannon. So as you see here, Hydro Cannon goes off. I get to a second Hydro Cannon, and I win CMP, so there's no way my opponent wins. So they're probably going to top left. <laughs> and as you see, as I predicted, bang. So we got luck. We got kind of lucky that there was a freaking... There you got lucky that was a Needle Queen in the back. But yes, Swampert, two shields, still the beast. Which is why this team is, like, statistically the strongest knocked owl team on PvPoke.com. We got Lickitung and Stunfisk. You already know how this matchup plays out. If we could get two Earthquakes, two shields, we could take back this matchup. Earthquake goes on. The first one. For some odd reason, they never shield the first one. I don't know why. But you know what? We're going to get power up here, but that's fine. So we just want to put as much pressure on this Lickitung as humanely possible. Even if you don't outright win this match, Noctowl still has a great matchup. Like I told you, I find that sacking... I'm literally sacking G Fisk in the lead as much as possible, unless it's a really bad lead, like a fighter. We got Pancake on an Umbreon because Umbreon got switched into us. Earthquake, the good thing about Pancake is that if you get two Earth... It's the same situation as Lickitung. If you get two Earthquakes through Shields, you can take back the match using straight Earthquake. So as you see, Umbreon and Lickitung are just obscenely hurt right now. I'm going to let this go. Foul Play doesn't kill my Pancake at this range, but I'm going to hope to get to another Rock Slide and I'm unable to, but that's fine. Because all we're going to do is just farm the unholy crap out of this poor Umbreon. So foul play goes through here. We're just going to farm the unholy crap out of it. I send in Swampert to try to get hydro, just as much Hydro Cannon energy as possible. I'm going to fire right away. The main reason I'm doing this is because of the fact that I can, I still have shields and my opponent is actually giving up shields. So this is actually really good because my master plan is to farm down this whole Umbreon and hope that I can get there before they foul play me again. If they don't, then I'm just going to use a shield, but then this... All this energy plus knockdown in the back should come out with a, should give me a dub. So as you see, I have a bazillion energy on Swampert. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till Lick Tongue comes in or something else, and we're going to Hydro Cannon. So Hydro Cannon will go through. This should kill or get dang near close to it. And as you see here, they get to a power win. I will shield this though because I don't want to lose my Swampert, and even if there's a body slam, I could farm down this Lick Tongue. And as you see, it's a Scrafty, which is great. So I'm going to build up to two Hydro Cannons. I'm going to fire this, hoping that they think it's an Earthquake, so I grab that last shield. 
And I do, which is great, because now I gotta do is send a Knocked Owl. Knocked Owl fires one Sky Attack, and then after that goes through, guess what? I have, I win CMP, so it doesn't really matter against whatever's in the back. So I'm gonna fire off this, I'm gonna fire off this Sky Attack. It'll get near killing, but as you see, Foul Play, they, they need a rev up in Foul Play to kill me. But unfortunately, they're unable to because Knocked Owl is so tanky. We take out this Scrafty, and then Lickitung loses CMP against my Swapper, so we just lock in our win condition, and that's game. Or we're just going to wing attack down this poor Lickitung, or I'll get to a Sky Attack before they do. I don't have the charges, so that's why you don't see me hitting any bubbles, and this should kill, and that's GG's. So this was just a super safe win condition here, just because we locked him into the Swamper winning CMP, and then we locked in a Noctowl being able to get one more Sky Attack. The next battle is kind of... yeah trash as in reggie steel that's a shiny reggie steel hi trash can this is a great lead for us except i'm probably going to expect them to swap out or catch something at one point that's why you don't see me firing right away this is probably gonna be a focus blast i'm not gonna shield it focus blast one focus blast won't kill me and then they're probably going to swap out and as i predicted they swap out into a meta champ so all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna swap in a knocked owl after we hit this earthquake and then i'm gonna send a knocked owl to try to do as much damage as i can so knocked out this i'm not going to shield this if this meta champ doesn't have power if this meta champ doesn't have ice punch it's great and unfortunately it's ice punch but that's perfectly fine we're gonna fire off the sky attack and then reggie steel has to fight my knocked out if they let this go so i can literally do even though reggie steel versus knocked out is a bad matchup shadow balls will add up if your opponent doesn't fire right away or rather, they can get up to 100 energies, but you should be able to do a lot. You should be able to do a little bit of damage to Shadow Ball here. And then, actually, that's just like 30%. Shadow Ball hurts a lot more than I thought against the Regis Steel. <laughs> this is going to be a Zap Cannon. Even Zap Cannon goes off, we still have a whole G Fisk and a Swamper. In this case, I'm going to use Swamper just because Swamper wins CMP. So you see me go over just one Mud Shot, and I'm going to fire this Hydro Cannon. I could have gone over two, but this is going to prompt my opponent to shield, or they're going to let go of Regis Steel. So as you see here, we got Sableye versus my Swamper now. And this is pretty much game. Because I have such a high energy lead and it takes six Shadow Claws for this. Yeah, it takes six Shadow Claws for Sableye to get to a freaking, to get to a move. And as you see here, I get to this Rock Slide. I didn't need to do this sack. I tried to sack just to be fancy, but it didn't really matter. This doesn't really matter anyways. Just because I'm able to deal so much chip damage on Sableye. And that I should be able to get to two Hydro Cannon. So as long as I put Sableye within one Hydro Cannon range, this is game anyways. So then Foul Play goes off. As you see here, we're just going to go ahead and Hydro Cannon this poor Sableye to death. This was Reggie Steel Medicham Sableye. Which was a super solid... That was one... Actually, I think that was like the most powerful Sableye team at one point. So it doesn't really matter here. Just because I have all this energy on Swampert. I'll either hit them on CMP... And or they're yeah, I hit them on CMP and then that's game. So but yes, as you see here, Swamper 2 Shield is a beast. And I really think Swampert is the reason why this team works, even though knocked out, even though knocked out will just like randomly put in the middle of it. So I really think Swampert is a good key of this team. But you gotta have to be careful because a lot of teams are also trying to target Swampert. And that's a terrible lead. We got Azumara onto Stunfisk. Which is kind of interesting that I haven't seen this. Actually, I saw like two Toxapexes, but like yeah. As you see, Azumarill against against Pancake. So, the fun fact is, is that if you can get two Earthquakes, it starts to chunk Azumarill. So, it's still not super safe for your opponent. It takes seven, I believe seven or eight to get the Hydro Pump. I don't think it's a Hydro Pump. So, as you see, it's an Ice Beam. So, Ice Beam goes off. We're going to try Earthquake through Shield. This should do enough damage to put this Azumarill in the red. Unless they decide not to Shield. Unless they decide to Shield, which is really up to them. But as you see, it puts it in the red. And now I can farm down this Azumarill. A lot of what happens is unless you get a really badly like a fighter, you're only you're not going to swap out of G-Fisk. I swap into Swamper here. And I'm getting all this extra energy and it happens to be a Trev, which isn't necessarily that bad. However, the problem is, is that Trevenant is going, Trevenant will kill you one seed bomb. So you need to chunk as much as possible here. So 5-4-5 five, is the way for Swampert. However, as you see, Trevenant can eat a move. You can't. So it's going to be a little tricky here. So I'm already sensing that this is either going to be a really tough matchup or I'm going to have to force a tie or something like that. As you see, Hydro Cannon goes through. I don't have to expend another shield here. I can go ahead and spend my shield here and overcharge or I can send in Knocked Owl. But at the same time, the reason you're going to see me shield here is because I still need all this energy on Swampert. I'm going to try to farm down, but unfortunately I'm able to. I have to fire this Hydro Cannon. 
So this is going to be really rough already. And I opponent shields. I send in knocked owl and my opponent has good reflexes. This is probably going to be an ice beam, which is terrible. But I'm going to be able to farm down this Azumarill. And then that tree is almost dead. So depending on what they have, the back row is like my win condition or I'm going to have to do something. As you see, we have a Sableye, which actually isn't terrible right here. However, the problem is, yeah, the problem is it's still very healthy and they still have a shield and I have no shield. So one return will yeet me for the face of the earth, but I can possibly, I'm hoping that this is likely going to be a return. So return goes through KOs or might not KO, but it does. And as you see, I have enough for earthquake here. So I'm going to fire my earthquake. My only win condition here is either I have to catch a seed bomb, which is really terrible to do, or maybe I can force a simultaneous KO. So as you see, Trevenant literally lives through one mud shot, and then this will KO, and then one mud shot from my G-Fisk will force a tie. So if you can't outright find a win condition, do your best. Try to force a tie and gain as much ELO as you can. Better to do a tie than an L, right? And, that and that's game. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. And I'll be going back to regularly posting battles and whatnot. However, it's going to kind of be like a mix of two things. Because with Scarlet and Violet coming out, I'm a way more excited to actually like make content for that game than I am with Pokemon Go PvP. Because let's admit it, y'all. We've been doing the same exact damn thing for two years? Almost? Give or take? Yeah. It's been the same exact system, minus like move changes and like QI updates, and Niantic still can't get it right. So, some of my content's like half of it's gonna be about battles and PvP content for PvP for Pokemon Go, and then the rest is going to be about Scarlet and Violet. So, again, I'm way more excited to do Scarlet and Violet uh, and hopefully produce a banger from that game instead of doing the same thing I've been doing over and over again. And even though I love to do it and because of the support of y'all, it's just like it's gotten pretty dang stale. And we're an e it, it's an eSport, that game that struggles to make over 2,000 viewers on a grand final. On a grand freaking final. Which is sad. So yes, the regular Pokemon games get way more exposure than Pokemon Go PvP does. So I'm going to go do Scarlet and Violet content back and it's gonna kind of like go like a cup and then scarlet and violet or i'm gonna try to release like two at a time but we'll see but it's gonna be like four pvp videos and then like three for scarlet and violet and then i'm gonna kind of like rotate do stuff but yeah that's the plan for the future because pvp is getting really boring for me as much as i like doing it i know y'all appreciate my content i really do appreciate you guys so do me a huge favor please like subscribe and comment for the youtube algorithm as i always say good luck on your global league sets and i will see y'all on the next video